Good evening. This is a regularly scheduled meeting, Kettering City Council. Today's date is December the 7th, and as always, we'll begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we begin this night's meeting, we'll pause for a brief invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for all who serve the Kettering community. Give us enthusiasm for our work and wisdom to make the right decisions. May we remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Guide this council so we may continue to serve our citizens with integrity and purpose, always remembering to be worthy of these responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. Our Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator in the back, Joe McKenzie. Joe, thank you as always. Mr. Lauder is not here. He has an excused absence. So we'll move on to the approval of the minutes, November 23rd council and meeting, council meeting and workshop minutes, as well as the November 30th spe special meeting minutes. Mr. Vice Mayor Kleepass. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I've reviewed the uh, minutes from the November 23rd council meeting and council workshop and also the joint meeting of November 30th with the Academy School Board. Uh, reviewed those minutes and find them to be in order and I uh, recommend their approval. Second. Any questions or comments? Being none, call the roll please. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Abstain on the 23rd and uh, yes for the 30th. Mayor Patterson? Yes. Moving on to proclamations appointments. Uh, we have an appointment for Board of Community Relations Student Liaison, Miranda Stedman? Sted Stedham. Stedham. Term ending 531-22. Is there a motion to appoint? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. like sign. Motion carries. Moving on to public hearings. We have none this evening. Public comment on legislation. Anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Is there anyone want to speak for council about legislation on tonight's agenda? Okay, we'll move on to ordinances in second reading. Vice Mayor Kleep has. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance in second reading this evening to amend Chapter 478 of the codified ordinances of the City of Kettering regarding shared mobility devices. Requested by the Law Department, I move for approval. Second. Mr. Hamer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Currently, Chapter 478 of the Kettering Codified Ordinances has a moratorium on the use of shared mobility devices within the city. If adopted, this ordinance would replace the moratorium with a framework of regulations to allow shared mobility device programs to operate within Kettering. The first reading of the ordinance was on November 9, where public feedback was received. The ordinance was then modified to address those concerns that were raised, and the changes were discussed with City Council at the November 23 workshop meeting. The changes were not significant enough to have been included in the published summary of the ordinance. So tonight we are here for the second reading of the ordinance. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Any questions of Mr. Hamer? Being none, call the roll, please. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Patterson? Yes. Moving on to resolutions. Ms. Fisher? Your Honor, I have a resolution directing the finance director to commit an additional 
$500,000 to the general fund balance to be expended for the economic development purposes effective January 1st of 2022. It is requested by the Finance Department, and I move for approval. Mr. Sweeterman. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will allow the Finance Director to commit an additional $500,000 of our general fund balance to economic development activities. We have been making a similar uh, commitment since 2012. This allows the city to expend those funds for economic development purposes uh, and the uh, expenditures reduce the commitment. Uh, it is anticipated on January 1st that the committed fund balance will be approximately $1.6 million. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Sweeterman? Being none, call the roll, please. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mayor Patterson? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to contract with the Miami Valley Fair Housing Center for operation of the city's fair housing program. Estimated cost is $34,000, funds available $34,000, and is requested by the Planning and Development Department. Move for approval. Move for approval. Move for approval. Lisa. Oh, second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Sweeterman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is an annual resolution for us as a requirement of our receipt of community development block grant funds and CHIP funds from the state of Ohio. The city is required to affirmative, affirmatively further fair housing. Over the last several years, uh, we've been utilizing the Miami Valley Fair Housing Center uh, for that purpose. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Sweeterman? Being none, call the roll, please. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Patterson? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into and implement one or more mutual co cooperation agreements with Day Air Credit Union for programs supporting affordable and sustainable home ownership and home improvements in Kettering and authorizing the expenditure of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds on programs that help mitigate financial hardships exasperated by the COVID-19 panic, pandemic. <laughs> the estimated cost is $1 million, funds available is zero, and this was requested by the Planning and Development Department. I move for approval. Second. Ms. Shrimp. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Uh, this resolution will authorize the city manager to approve a mutual cooperation agreement with the city of Kettering and Day Air Credit Union for the purpose of promoting the general wel welfare of Kettering residents by providing affordable and sustainable home ownership and home improvement uh, and authorizes the expenditure of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, also known as ARPA funds, on these programs uh, to help mitigate the financial hardships uh, exacerbated by the pandemic. As a recipient of ARPA funds, the city decided it will set aside $1 million for community development projects. Additionally, Day Air Credit Union has received approximately $1.8 million in funding through the U.S. Treasury Department's rapid response programming. This is intended to address the economic challenges uh, by the, created by the pandemic. By combining resources from both the city and Day Air, uh, the first time home buyer and home improvement assistant programs were created. Uh, city ARPA funds uh, for both programs will be in the form of a zero interest declining balance loan, which will be completely forgiven in five years, providing the homeowners remain in their home. Under the first time home buyer program, Kettering first time buyers will receive up to 10% down payment uh, and funds to cover closing costs up to $20,000 when paired with a special uh, day air mortgage product. With the home improvement assistant program, uh, Kettering homeowners will have access to a special low rate home impro improvement loan, excuse me, from day air with a forgivable loan of up to 20,000 from the city of Kettering. Kettering staff will manage the ARPA programs and service the ARPA loans. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Ms. Shrimp? Being none, call the roll, please. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Patterson? Yes. 
Your Honor, I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2021. From the general fund, $40,000. From the State Highway Construction and Maintenance Fund, $90,000. From ARPA Fund, $1 million. Estimated cost is 1,990,000 net transfers. Amount budgeted is zero, requested by the Finance Department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Schwederman. Thank you, Your Honor. We have just two items uh, specifically for tonight's supplemental appropriation. The first is a supplemental for the State Highway Fund related to uh, an ODOT project. Uh, the amount includes estimated ODOT share of additional appropriation of 50000 and Kettering's local share of $40,000. A transfer from the general fund is also requested to the State Highway Fund for the city's share of $40,000. We also will be appropriating into the ARPA fund the $1 million uh, that was previously presented in resolution number four. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Mr. Schwederman? Being none, call the roll, please. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Patterson? Yes. Moving on to ordinances in first reading. Vice Mayor Klepas. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance uh, in first reading to provide for the table of organization, position classification plan, compensation plan, and pay schedules and rules and regulations pertaining to conditions of work and supplemental benefits for the employees of the City of Kettering, Ohio, and to repeal ordinance number 4365-21, requested by the uh, whatever department it was. What, who, who requested it? I'm down, down, down the bottom. Help me out. Finance. Requested by the Finance Department. Move for approval. Uh, no, I'm first reading. First reading. I'm sorry. Human resources. Mr. Schwederman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is an ordinance in first reading and is essentially our personnel ordinance for 2022. The 2022 personnel ordinance includes uh, the pay increases that have been previously negotiated in collective bargaining agreements, as well as a pay increase uh, for non-unionized employees at 2.5%. Uh, that 2.5% is, is consistent uh, with the union contracts. We're also adjusting the regular part-time scales by 2.5%. And our uh, temporary part-time scales uh, undergo a restructuring in this ordinance uh, of a significant uh, portion of the what we call the 800 pay series. Uh, this will allow us uh, more flexibility and ability to meet market uh, as we hire employees throughout the summer months. Uh, the ordinance also includes um, the addition of an additional full-time um, person in our law department, which will be partially funded by the reduction or the conversion of a part-time position into that full-time position. We're also including a civilian supervisor position for our police dispatch operations for 2022. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Schwederman? Being none, we'll move on to certifications and petitions. Ms. Kaczynski. Your Honor, we do not have any certifications or petitions this evening. Thank you. City Manager Report and Community Update. Mr. Schwederman. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a few, a few slides for you, and um, we'll start with our leaf pickup program. Um, we are currently in District uh, 10, headed towards District 11, which is the last district in the city. Um, because of the late fall of the leaves and the current status of uh, the, the entire city starting essentially uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, we will communicate that with our residents, uh, but uh, the point we want to get across tonight is that we will be back through the entire city. Um, so if you have leaves at the curb and we've already been there, that's okay. We're coming back through to pick those up. Um, if you have any questions about our LEAF uh, progress or where we're at each day, you can call our LEAF hotline at 296-2472. Once again this year, we are having the uh, Kettering is home to the holidays. If you're interested in adding your home uh, to the Tour of Lights, you can contact uh, our volunteer office at 296-2433.
Our next city council meeting and our last city council meeting for the calendar year will be Tuesday, December 14th. Um, I want to make special note of the start time for the council meeting will be 735 as usual. The workshop that evening will not start at 6 p.m. It will start at 645, so 645 and 735 next Tuesday. For the Christmas holidays, the city administrative offices will be closed on Thursday, December 23rd and Friday, December 24th. Uh, as we say every week, just a reminder that uh, shop local in Kettering. And lastly, I believe we have one more slide. Uh, just a reminder for everyone that, that we will once again have the Poland Farm Christmas Day gathering on December 25th from 1 to 4 at Poland Farm. Um, many thanks to the, all the volunteers that pull this wonderful event off each year. And if you need a place to be on Christmas Day, uh, we suggest you come to Poland Farm for the festivities. Your Honor, that's all I have for you uh, this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Sweeterman? Thank you. Moving on to audience participation, point and program. If you'd like to come speak for council, please come on down to the podium. We do have a five minute limit and ask you to give us your name and phone number and address. <laughs> anybody, anybody? Depends, phone number, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Next, we'll move on to City Council reports. Vice Mayor Kleepath. Hey, thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> the uh, last meeting of council was on no November the 23rd. Um, I, I neglected at that meeting to uh, congratulate Bob Scott and Lisa Duvall for their election to council and welcome them to council. It was their first meeting last week, and you can see tonight they're already seasoned veterans. Glad to have you both on council. We're glad to have a full crew and look forward to working with you in the next couple of years anyway. Um, also, um, one of the highlights of, uh, of every quarter that we haven't been able to do for uh, the, since the pandemic is having the joint meeting with the school board. I'm sure uh, the mayor may want to talk about that in a little bit more length, but it's always beneficial when we're able to get together with the school board, and we were able to do that on uh, November the 30th. And then lastly, I want to mention that uh, the, the tree lighting on, on the third last Friday was a great event. Uh, this is a second event in a row where the weather has been great. I've got to find out for the Spasenach, uh, for the Sister City Committee, me, who's picking those dates for these events because we, we need that for the next, next Spasenach next year, a good, good day. And last but not least, the holiday shopping season's here. Remember to shop Kettering. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Ms. Fisher. Your Honor, I uh, won't go through what Mr. Kleep has went through, but I will say I've been walking my neighborhood, which I do often, and I will say the holiday lights are out and the residents are doing an awesome job. Uh, shout out specifically to Coker Drive and Bonnie Road. And if you drive a little bit farther down on Swigert and you get to James Madison, we actually <coughs> have a neighbor that has the lights to the music. And so, uh, so keep putting out your lights. Um, it's brightening up our city. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Uh, I'll be brief. I had the privilege last Friday to attend the uh, tree lighting ceremony. And it, it was a pleasure to see the residents and our fellow citizens enjoying themselves. And I agree with Tony, the weather was fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Duvall. Uh, I would like to echo what uh, Mr. Scott said. The tree lighting was so festive and it was a great way to kick off the uh, holidays. Absolutely loved seeing all the little kids there. Um, I do want to say that earlier this evening we voted for Miranda to join the Board of Community Relations and I have to say she is engaged and intelligent and wonderful and I think she's going to be a great asset to the board. I just want to welcome her and I'm very excited to see what she'll do. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Duke. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was not here on the 23rd, so I do want to welcome my, my new colleagues to my left. Nice to see you all. And again, I won't uh, echo the other comments that have been made. I do want to mention two things. Um, number one, this uh, last week, we lost a, a very long time uh, servant to our community. Phyllis Worthman passed away. Phyllis was 99 years old 
at the time of her death. And she was one of the, uh, probably it goes back into the 80s when she was involved with the Sister City Program, Sister City Committee. Uh, I know she traveled abroad and, and they hosted families. And so to uh, Sue, her daughter Sue and, and her whole family, uh, condolences to, to the Worthman family. And, and I want to close with just a, a, a personal privilege. Um, we lost another, uh, a great statesman this last week, I think, in, in Senator Robert Dole. And in, in reading over and hearing some of the things that were said, I just want to quote one passage that he said when he was being nominated, I, I believe, for the presidency of the United States. And he said the following, and I just think it's so relevant to not only city councils, but to state governments and federal governments. He said, and I quote, in politics, honorable compromise is not a sin. It's what protects us from absolute, absolutism and intolerance, end quote. And boy, in today's world, you know, we're, we're having such a difficult time communicating with each other at the political level. I just think those are words of wisdom from one of the grand old statesmen uh, that have been around forever. And finally, again, we're still dealing with this stuff, folks. Wear your mask whenever possible. Thanks. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Just a couple of things. We talked about the joint school board meeting. Uh, that was one of the things I missed during COVID. We get an opportunity to kind of hear some of the updates. And uh, we had a great update, uh, both from the school side and from, from the city side. And, and I think, and I brought this point up at the meeting there, school board and city council has such a great relationship. School and the city as a whole have such a great relationships, and that's not always the case in, in, in all the schools, not only in our community, but across the, across the nation. And uh, I hope people don't take that for granted because we're able to do a lot of things, achieve a lot of goals, and do things for both the school and the city because of this relationship that, uh, that we have. So I hope that, and I'm sure it will con con continue. Also, I'd like to thank uh, the mayor's tree lighting was, uh, Christmas tree lighting was on uh, the third last Friday. And it was my last. It was great. The weather was fine. The weather was perfect compared to some of them. Um, I think I shared with Mary uh, my favorite one was uh, 2013 when we had like a foot of snow and it was me doing a snow angel at the base of the Christmas tree. So they're all a little different, but they're all great community things. And I can't remember who talked about the community and seeing them out there. And uh, I'd like to thank Jamie Jarosik at uh, WDTN who, who's been willing to host that and work with us every year, and she does a great job. And also to the children's choir, uh, who who adds a little little sparkle to, to, to the evening and everything. Also, I, I need to make an apology to our city manager, who I demoted. <laughs> when I was doing introductions and said our assistant city manager, but no, there was no pun intended by that. I just wanted to let you know that was just, just an error because Mr. Kleep has said that in my ear and it just rang home, so I wasn't sure, but thank you. Uh, also, the school board, uh, I'd also like to thank, they gave me a, a very nice letter for, for my years of service from the school board president, Jim Ambrose and the school board, and uh, it was very touching and uh, it meant a lot to, to receive that from, from them. Also, I'd like to thank the, the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts staff who gave me a beautiful framed picture of, of one year of the mayor's tree lighting with a little black brass plaque at the bottom that had a nice little message. And so thank, thank them for, for, for doing that. I appreciate that and it was, uh, it was nice. So with that, if there's no other business to come before us this evening, our next regularly scheduled meeting is on December 14th. And with that, we stand adjourned.